Hey everybody, welcome back to another 6 Minute Salesforce. Uh, I'm RJ from System.Debug, and today we're going to talk about going through overrides, how you use them, and a very simple use case for them right now. And we'll get into an advanced version of that later. But right now, we're going to do just a very simple use case so I can show you guys real quick the easiest two ways to go about doing this. So we're starting with Google. I'm just going to go straight to the Google homepage, and we're going to go here and open up our dev tools, and that's Option Command I on Mac, F12 on Windows, and I believe it's still F12 on Linux as well. Could be wrong about that. Feel free to double check me and leave a comment. And I was already playing with overrides, and I have my override folders here already, but if you don't have this, basically what you'll do is you'll add the, there will be a button up here that says add a folder and it's any folder on your desktop or in your documents or wherever you keep your folders just make an overrides folder and throw it in there this is just going to save all of your overrides so when you have this it's going to allow you to do a lot of different things and we're not going to enable local overrides just yet um, but we will in a couple minutes we're going to talk this through so step number one if you want to you can take this guy and if we go to the network, you'll see there's a whole bunch of stuff here. We can actually inspect this logo right here because that's what we're going to change. And we see that it's images, branding, Google logo, 2x, Google logo color, 272 by 92 dp. So we can go back over to our sources and we can click overrides over here. And so here we are. We got nothing in here. And then we can go back over here to network. We can look, images, branding, Google logo, 2x. If we stretch this out, you can see it right there. So that's where the image was. And it was the 272 by 92 DP. So that's the one right there. So the two ways you can do this. Number one, click up. Oh, guess what? It, there's nothing there. What you have to do, totally forgot this. You got to enable local overrides and watch this. It's going to change. Now you can save for overrides. So click, boom. Now it has saved it for overrides in your overrides folder. You can go look. Our file system points to it right here, and we've got it. So a second way of doing this is if you click here and you open containing folder, you'll see that everything is there. Let's close some of these other ones that I don't need that I left open, of course. Um, and what you can do is you can actually drag this guy out and onto your desktop. And you can drag it right in there into your uh, folder if you want. Now you would have to make that entire folder structure yourself, but it is what it is. So here we are, we've got our Google logo here. Um, and we want to do something with it because we want to see how these overrides work, right? So again, we're going to open the containing folder here. And I'm just going to edit this real simple um, in our editor here. So we're going to take it, right? And you can watch because nothing is going to happen just quite yet. So we'll see this. And I'm just going to take and put a couple of lines here. I'm going to take a couple lines here, put it through the image itself. So delete. Oops, delete, and notice nothing's happening um, on our image just yet. Move this go down a little bit, put another line, and one final line just for good measure, right above that guy. Right, so now we got three lines on our Google image, and it looks goofy as heck, um, but we're going to save that. Now that guy's there, notice again, nothing happened yet. So we're going to go back to our uh, Google logo here, and we'll see if we can, uh, it's not going to show us in the preview just yet. But anyway, we can refresh the page here, and there's our wonderful edited image. And we can turn these overrides off and refresh if we want to go back to the original. Turn them back on. The overrides are still there because we left them there. Oops. Refresh, and you see, again, 
the um, the edit that we did. So now this is just one way of doing it on a very simple, simple level. This is the basics of it. You pull something from the internet, you modify that thing from the internet, you save it locally, and then when you refresh, you tell this thing to enable local overrides and you override that image, that JavaScript, whatever it is, you override it locally. And now you can begin doing a lot of local testing, rapid development, and things like that. One more thing I wanna show you guys. If I close this and I refresh, the overrides are off. You have to have your developer console open and enable local, local overrides on in order to get the local overrides actually there. So that's it for this six minute sales force. Next time, I'm gonna show you guys uh, a little bit more advanced. We'll do a little deeper dive. We'll touch on some JavaScript. We'll touch on some other stuff, some HTML maybe. I don't know what we'll get into, but we'll get into it and you'll see how to do it with other files as well. And that the overrides, the local overrides that just came out um, very recently uh, in Chrome are super powerful and we're going to show you how to use them to not only enhance your development abilities on Chrome and on the web, but in Salesforce as well. All right, I'll catch you guys next time.